Now former Detroit Lion Darius Slay was sent packing to the Eagles by Matt Patricia, Bill Belichick's protege. But big play Slay did not go quietly, saying he lost all respect for the Lions coach in 2018, according to ESPN's Michael Rothstein. Take a listen. He told me I wasn't elite. Uh, uh, he told me I had no business working out with uh, Richard Sherman and Tlaib because I wasn't elite. And those are guys are elite category, and I was just good. But I ain't had that much uh, respect for uh, Matt P that much as a, as a, as a person because you know, it was hard for me to play for him. The discord stems from two instances in 2018. Welcome back to First Take. It's yours truly, Stephen A. Smith. Molly Karam to Rose is having some technical difficulties. That's why I am sitting in a host chair. We welcome to the show right now, Damian Woody. Woody, you know, two-time Super Bowl champion. Let me be very, very clear. I'm the host right now. You will speak when <laughs> spoken to. You will be respectful, okay? And you will, and you will make. And Matt, by the way, sit up in your chair when I'm talking to you, okay? Make sure you do all of these things, and you will speak, and you will keep your comments crisp and concise. You will not talk longer than I say. I'm running the show today. Max has adapted somewhat begrudgingly, but he's adapted. You will do the same, Woody. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, Damian. You. St are you Damian. ready? Stephen A, you know Stephen A. <laughs> Stephen A pulled the plug on Molly's whole situation. Stephen A snuck to, <laughs> you snuck to Molly's undisclosed location and pulled the plug just so he could do this to us. <laughs> hey, 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 I hey, know hey, Stephen let's get right to it because we got some do this for the longest. What? What? Let me tell you something. I'm trying to do this for longer. Trying to take never, over never the show. But I already told you when I'm on the show, let's get right to the football issues, please. Let's get right to it. Darius Slay, you heard what he had to say. Max, I will start with you. Your thoughts about what Slay had to say about Matt Patricia. This seems to me like two guys who both have um, outsized views of themselves, both Patricia and Darius Slay. And Darius Slay has been very good at times, no question about it. But that helps a player oftentimes. When a player has a big ego about himself, um, so long as he can fit within a team concept, that make that helps him. Stephen A., I think about an individual sport like um, uh, uh, like Deontay Wilder, right? I know he's coming off a loss, but for the longest, it wasn't just that he could punch. It's that he viewed himself as champion, as great, as special, and that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I think that's the, the case with a lot of top players. So even if... Patricia thinks that Darius Slade needs some humility and needs to understand really where he fits in, and he's not quite at the upper level, maybe not anymore, if they thought he lost half a step or something. I don't really know that that's productive, but okay, that's what's from Slade's point of view. From Patricia's point of view also, he seems to not really have a sense of self. Who's Matt Patricia as a head coach? You know, it's one thing to, and that's why Slade could say I didn't really respect him, because the stuff you did with Belichick accrues to Belichick's greatness. What have you done as a head coach that gives you standing to talk to a player who does have standing in the league like that? So I think this is really a, a, an issue of two people, both in Slay and Patricia, who have kind of outsized versions of themselves. The difference is, in Slay's case, it can be productive. In, in Patricia's case, I would think... It's counterproductive if he comes off that way to players mm -hmm. without his bona fides to back it up. Woody, you may speak. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, man, I think a lot, I think what, what happens with a lot of guys that come from this Belichick tree, man, is they literally try to take the Patriot way, the Patriot culture, uproot it and take it wherever they are. And I've, you know, I've had a discussion with many of people. It doesn't work that way. If you can't learn to be yourself and build your own culture, nine times out of ten, you're going to fail. And I think that's what we're seeing in Detroit right now. Matt Patricia wants everybody to be cookie cutter. He wants everybody to be similar to how it was in New England. But I think the real coaches knows how to adapt to different personalities. Bill Parcells was the master of it with the New York Giants back in the 80s. So... You come from the New England Patriots organization, you try to do it that way, 
And then guys aren't buying in because you know what makes guys buy in? Winning football games. Okay, Jim Caldwell, his last year went nine and seven. Matt Patricia, in two years in Detroit, has only won nine games. So how can you expect a guy like Darius Clay, Darius Slay, to buy in when the results aren't there on the well, field? And when Darius Slay doesn't buy in as one of the best players in the organization, then guess what's going to happen? A lot of other guys on that roster, they're not going to buy in as well. Well, the interesting part about what you're saying, Woody, is that, listen, in, in, in the two years that Matt Patricia has been in Detroit, he's 9-22, and one nine twenty two and, and one. By the way, I won't even get into his hairdo. How how haggardly dressed he looks half the time. He doesn't look like a professional at all. He really really needs to clean himself up. Matt, I would say Max, I would suggest a, a trip to Brioni or Tom Ford or something. The, the man needs help. There's no question about that in terms of how he looks and how he carries himself. Presentation does matter just as much as results sometimes, or at least before results. He's got neither working for him at this particular moment in time. And then when you take into account the fact that Matthew Stafford still hasn't progressed and hasn't achieved despite the talent that we know he has, and then you've got a star like Darius Slay that you want to insult or disrespect, it makes no sense whatsoever. Now, we've seen stuff like this happen before. Like, for example, you have some people, I don't want to say the disrespect, but people applaud the great Popovich's of the world for being able to coach Tim Duncan, and Popovich would be the first to tell you that he's grateful for Tim Duncan to allow for allowing him to be for allowing himself to be coached all of those years. So one could easily reverse it, look at Darius Slay, and say, you know what? What about being coached? The problem is a guy like Matt Patricia doesn't necessarily have the cachet, and you have assistants who walk in the jobs believing that they have cachets because of what they did as assistants, not recognizing the fact that the people who usually get the most credit is the head coach. The rare exception is somebody like a Buddy Ryan when Mike Dicko won the Super Bowl as head coach of Chicago in 1985, and both him and Buddy Ryan got carried off the field because the defense was considered separate and apart from everything else. But that is incredibly, incredibly rare in the National Football League, and nobody brings that up. Having said all of that, Woody, my question to you would be this. What do you think Darius Slay is going to do for the Philadelphia Eagles now that he no longer has the excuse of despising his coach in Detroit? Because that's not going to be the case in Philadelphia, obviously, with Doug Peterson. Well, listen, Doug Peterson has something that, <laughs> that Matt Patricia doesn't have. He has a Super Bowl. He's been successful as a head coach as for a head the coach, Philadelphia yes. Eagles. So he's walking, he's, wa he's walking into a situation, into a, a highly successful organization, highly successful head coach, so he's more adept to probably buying into the whole system. Now, has he fallen off since 2017 in his Pro Bowl yet? Yes, he has. He's still a very good corner, and he walks into the building being the best corner in Philadelphia. So I think this is two totally different situations uh, between Detroit and Philadelphia. And importantly, ahead, you know who he get, who you you know who he does work against Amari Cooper, and it's not like Odell is in New York anymore, and, you know. So when you start looking at the NFC East, his best matchup is is the, his chief rivals best player right now. So that works for Philadelphia. Stephen, I want to address something you talked to, you said about coaches, and this is not my original point. And the Lakers beat writer who made this point can DM me later so I can shout him out because I'm forgetting who said this, you know, going back about five years. The difference between Mike D'Antoni and Phil Jackson, Stephen A., is when D'Antoni didn't have his star buy-in, his, his attitude on the Lakers that year was like he just threw up his hands. Well, the guy won't buy in. In that case, Kobe Bryant. Phil Jackson would think of a way into the star's psyche. Now, I know football and, and basketball are different, but there's a big difference between a coach who says, my way or the highway, and forget this guy or whatever, and a coach who, who, who not only gets the talent in place, but then says, how do I best use what I have? Because in the end, as was famously said, you but are you what your record says you are. I predict Slay will be much happier in Philadelphia. Yeah, David, but Max, Woody, I, I was saying, I was saying that to I'm, interject. I'm actually giving you permission to interject. You didn't ask for it. Make sure you ask next time. Listen, but you may interject. Let, let me Go tell ahead, you something. David. Let me let me tell you something. Just because you're running this show, don't mean you run me. 
All right, so let's make that real clear what? right now. You what? see the type of shirt I got did, on. I got no Didn't you time. hear Max I got, tell you what I, I did to Molly's microphone? Right now, and I'm, didn't you and hear I'm that? sitting at the crib. What? Did you, did you hear what I did to her microphone? Do you want that to happen to you? Do you want to be talking over the airways and nobody hears you. you? You better watch your mouth. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You're not going to do anything over here. Believe that. Anyway, by the way, now, well, let say me say this. this well, but hold on, well, hold on. I'm not finished talking. I'm not finished talking. Oh, I wasn't okay? aware. I'm I wasn't aware. Talking. Watch your talk. Now, Matt, Watch your talk. Now, Watch your listen, talk. when you're bringing up Dan Tony, yeah. when you bring up Dan Tony, that's why I brought up Parcells, because it doesn't matter the sport. The elite head coaches know how to play the psychological aspect because you're dealing with so many different personalities on the team. That's what I'm talking about with Matt Patricia. You can't just uproot the the coach and think that it's just going to work. You got to be able to deal with all the different personalities. I right. totally now, agree Stephen with that. A, you I'm of the talk. mindset, and too. I'm of the mindset, you better watch your mouth, man. Step back. Lean back. <laughs> lean back, man. Lean back. How about what? that? Here's the deal. You when I look I'm at the Philadelphia Eagles, this defense, if this defense improves with what we've been saying about Carson Wentz, assuming that they're not going to be just decimated with the injuries that they decimated them last year, even though they still managed to get to the playoffs, despite all of those things, I think this could be a significant upgrade for the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll wait and see. Before I go to break, go to bump. Max Kellerman, I'm seeing you didn't have a tie. We'll talk about that later. Damian Woody, goodbye with your disrespect. Friday, brother. Coming up next, Mike Wilborn is going to come on the show to discuss with us whether or not he thinks there's going to be an NBA season when all is said and done. And oh, by the way, I said I was going to bring up boxing as well because Mike Tyson, the knockout artist that he was, this is an anniversary of one of them great knockouts. There's a lot to talk about. The NBA, whether or not there's going to be a season. Boxing, the one sport that Max Kellerman really, really knows. All of that's coming up next. Don't touch that dial.